Hello, welcome back to The Freak Show. Bumpy McSquiggums here. I want to thank you all for joining me as I continue with my sneak peek of Pillars of Eternity 2, Dead Fire. And this should be the first episode that has gameplay in it, ladies and gentlemen. I know we spent a lot of time in menus and character creation and everything else. Just want to get that all out of the way, get you guys familiar with it. You can start plotting and planning your character, your perfect character of Doom, I guess, for when you start to play. That way you have it all in your head, you've seen it all, you know what you want to do, you have it all planned out, you can just hop in, create the character, and go. That was the plan, the gold, hope, the dream, and once I start my full official Let's Play, I'm going to be doing the same thing. I'm just going to create my character, and I'm going to go. So, that being said, we have options here. We are a Conjurer. So I believe getting a quarter staff is probably a pretty good idea, but I think instead we should probably go with something more along the lines of this. All right, so let's just take a quick gander. We're just going to go through. I just want to show you guys there is a bunch of different stuff. The character takes careful aim, hits knock the target prone. And if we take a look at this one, it interrupts targets. This one, it's higher accuracy, whereas this one has more penetration and overdraw. So and it also apparently tells you quiet. What the what the sound of the weapon does. Take a look at the oh, even firearms are apparently quiet. Who knew? All right, so firearms. Let's see here. Takes time to line up while I'm shot. They're far more accurate. This one. Uh, let's see. Short range, thick smoke. Okay. And then of course this is what the pistol. Yeah. This is uh, fires more quickly at the cost of, of uh, accuracy. I'm sorry, guys and gals. Then we have destructive channeling. Uh, channeling excessive energy through the scepter hurts the wielder with each attack, but increases the damage dealt. Definitely not something I'm really looking into. The rod uh, attacks with greater energy, slowing the recovery between, so you attack a bit slower. But it also hits enemies around the target. That's probably the one I'll be going with. And then interfering a barrage. Focus wand attacks to interfere with enemies' abilities to attack effectively at the cost of damage. I'll probably do both of those two. Then just taking a look at the dagger. Yeah, let's see. Focus on deflecting incoming attacks, trading damage for deflection against melee weapons. Then we have the bleeding cut. Uh, brutal swings, dig deeper. The attacks are slower, but bleeding wounds on hit. Striking them in the head will lower their will defense. This is kind of a debuffing thing. What's well, a club? All right, the flail uh, attacks on your target's footing, dealing less damage but lowering their reflex, so it's easier to hit them. Interfering strikes, interfering with their ability to focus their aim at the cost of damage. Once again, this is a mace. It basically damages the target's armor, but it's slower to swing. Then you have the Needle Strike from, this is, I'm assuming, like a, a Rapier or something? Yep. Uh, let's see. Strike with it for vital points to ensure success. So it increases accuracy, but you swing a bit slower. Then you have the Falchion, or the Falchion, nope, Saber. Uh, arcing Strikes, you get Penetration, but it's a bit slower once again. Spears Thrust, you can engage an additional foe at the cost of Stride, so you move a bit slower. But you can engage more than one. That's kind of a cool thing. Piercing thrust with the stiletto. It's more of like a dagger. It's a short. It's a longer dagger. But it's just really straight. It's just for stabbing, basically. So again, uh, increased penetration, but a bit slower for attacking. Then you have the half sword, which is interesting. Using your blade to penetrate armor more effectively. Again, at the lower of deflection, so you don't defend yourself as well and deflect attacks. And then, again, weapon, or, yeah, armor penetration at the cost of swinging shields. Let's see, recovery time. You intercept melee attacks better with recovery time. When missed by melee weapons, you gain an increased accuracy on your weapon attack. Okay. Using your shield to attempt to block incoming, resisting attack if successful at the cost of recovery time. Okay. That's not bad, so that's the... What kind of shield is this one? The medium shield, and then finally the wall shield. Uh, taking careful position behind the large shield significantly reduces incoming ranged weapon damage, as well as damage from attacks that target reflex. While active, you are unable to move. Okay, interesting. Then finally, penetration and deflection. You gain penetration at the cost of deflection for the S-Dock. It's basically allowing you to get through armor. The Greatsword, Rending Smash... 
Uh, swings of great force increasing damage, but you're less accurate. The giant mace, I'm assuming, a morning star. Uh, direct your strikes to the body, dealing less damage, but lowering the target's fortitude. Uh, exposing strikes. Weak points at the cost of reduced damage. Pole axe. Uh, trading damage for increased engagement, so you should be able to engage more than one target. That is a lot of stuff. Can be acquired from spells, abilities, talents, or by wearing a shield. Interesting. Well, I'll have to read more about that. If you guys if you guys want to, real quick, you can go ahead and pause and read that. That's all stuff that I want to get to later. Like I said, I want to get into this, I want to say, within hopefully five minutes. We're about five minutes now. Five to seven minutes is where I want to get into the actual game. Defensive, let's see. Gain increased deflection against melee weapons at the cost of recovery time. Anyway, so we have the two that we want. It's going to be those two. It's going to be fine. Alright, we're going to go next. We get to customize our character. I am fine. Colors. Let's go with, uh, I don't know, like a, a green. Secondary, like a black. Our skin. I, I don't really care about the rest of it. Again, this is just a temporary character to get into it. It looks like there's not a tremendous amount of stuff available right now. So that's fine. It's, I'm not sure where we were at to start with. I apologize. It's not that big of a deal to me, though. I'm just going to take a quick gander. I think that, yeah, that was our hairdo. All right, so there we go. That's what we look like. We're going to go next. After them! That's fine. For a voice, we can be average, Hulk, sassy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't... Stoic, no. Roguish. Eh, sullen. Yeah, that, that seems about right. All right, and we're going to be called... Oh, I, I don't know. Who should we... What should we call him? What should we call him? We should call him... Gus Silly Pants Jackson. There, oh no! Gus Silly Pants Jackson. There we go. Can we get the extra space in there? No, we can't. Alright. So it's Gus Silly Pants Jackson. That is our character. We have all the stats and information here that we could ever want to know about and all the stuff that we have learned. And we're going to be in there. And it's right around the seven and a half minute mark. Okay, welcome to the Backer Beta. So, basically, you and your party have arrived on a remote island of Tikawara that has been troubled by storms. The island is home to one of the tribes of the Huana, native re residents of the Deadfire Archipelago. The Valley and Trading Company, a colonial faction, is working with the Huana to find high-value goods. Alright, so our party starts at level 6. Make sure we level up our character after creation and check our equipment. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go into a quick pause. I'll try to do the levels relatively quickly. I'm going to click down there. Gus Silly Pants Jackson. We're going to go with... What is Arcana? Arcana covers knowledge of all things magical that do not deal with metaphysics. It can, in combat, it can be used to increase the power level of scrolls. Eh. That's one of our things. That's fine. And then another passive skill. We're going to go with... Insight, I guess. Next, we'll also do metaphysics. So right now we can conjure a familiar, but we need to learn our first ability for level one. We have all these things, it looks like. We have a passive ability. Conjure already have. Already have, and we already have this. So these are the ones that are available to us. The ones that are grayed out are from the schools that we're not allowed to pull from because we are a conjurer in and of itself. I think what I'd like to do is possibly I want something I can cast from further back but it doesn't look like I get that choice powers um we'll just go with spirit shield why not onward we're gonna go next it's our next level we're once again gonna go with arcana this time we're gonna go with metaphysics Okay, now we can go into level 2 skills. We could still pull stuff from level 1 if we wanted to. Level 2, Fetid Carcass. Uh, Grimoire Slam. If they get too close, you can smack them with your book. Combusting Wounds causes enemy wounds in an area of effect to ignite. Ugh. Um, Corrosive Siphon. That might be a thing that I do. Eats away at the target spirit, inflicting corrosive damage, converting that essence into health for the caster. Not terrible. I think I'm going to go with the Necrotic Lance, though. Just going to take a look at the rest of the Merciless Gaze. You guys can pause and read all of these. 
I'm just glancing through. Like I said, I'd rather get through this quickly. Protective shield. Binding web's not bad. Bulwark against the elements. And of course, infuse with vital essence. Fit and smart inspiration. So we're going to go with the corrosive lance. Alright. I'm going to go with... I, I suppose alchemy this time around. And we're going to go with metaphysics again. We go next. I'm going to say that we're probably going to do the, the life siphon thing. Seems like a legit thing. We can now learn an additional weapon type if we were so inclined. I think what I would like to do is learn maybe a medium shield. I don't have to necessarily use it yet, but I'm going to learn that anyway. Just in case we ever end up getting to that. We're on the fifth level now is, that we're, is what we're doing. We're going to learn... Another one into Arcana, and we're going to go back into Insight. Then we're going to get History next. Alright, we have the third one. Arcane Dampener, a nullifying field of antagonistic magical energy. Expressing all beneficial effects. Uh, draining Touch. I don't like touch skills. I never did. Uh, lower the Action Speed and Stride. Noxious Burst. Eh. Explosive vulnerabilities. Bears the enemy's combat vulnerabilities for all to see, interrupting them as well as reducing their armor rating and deflection. That's a pretty good debuffing ability. A life force to gain the swift inspiration at the cost of his or her own health, draining over time. Minor blights. It can be thrown at an enemy, causing burn, freeze, corrode, shock to anyone caught in the area of effect. Blights are continually cycled and replenished until the spell ends. That sounds cool. And this should be the final level, and we're going to go with one more into Arcana, and we're going to go into History. And I think I like the idea of Exposed Vulnerabilities, but I might go with another Tier 2 skill. I may want to go with something along the lines of... Is it just for the caster? Yes. Vitality. Yeah, I'm going to go with that one. Just another buff to give us a little bit of health and everything else. Okay, so there we are, ladies and gentlemen. It is time. We are officially in the game. We can zoom out. We can scroll around the map. If you want to use the middle mouse button to click and drag, you can do that as well. Let's see what kind of characters we have real quick. We have Gus Silly Pants Jackson. He is our conjurer. We have a mercenary fighter, we have a mercenary rogue, a mercenary wizard, and a mercenary priest. And also I believe we have equipment that we should probably put on our character. So that being said, I'm going to go with the fine leather armor because of course I am. Okay. Ship crew morale, minus one, I don't know what that means yet. Uh, fine rod or fine wand. I'm going to go with the rod. And then we'll do this as the... Secondary, and then our adventure grimoire, put that there. And we should pretty much be set at this point. Alright, wish us luck, folks. This is my first time actually adventuring out no from problem. here. A ship! A ship! I'm saved! Why not? The dwarf fans himself with a dish rag. His face is dark and shiny with exertion. Sweat colors... Colors wide crescents on his shirt. He looks at you like a drowning man would a, at dry land. Weeks, I have been stranded here. The Valiant Trading Company sends no one unless... He squints at you, dabbing his brow feverishly with the corner of the rag. Stranded? This is a settled island. By whose standard do you call this settled? With an anxious swallow, he glances over his shoulder at a sleepy ramshackle village. His gaze darts from one grass thutch hut to another as if expecting some unspeakable horror to emerge. Uh, you were saying? See what he's... Yeah, I'll follow his gaze. What is he looking at? He isn't fixating on anything in particular, but his eyes widen with unease whenever one of the island Amuawahamanamanamana draw near. He flinches and clears his throat. I only tarry here because my shipmates went to Poco Kohara to search for a Lumina, Luminous Adra. He brushes an insect off of his sleeve. I worry that the Raunu, the local chieftain, okay, uh, gave Captain Beza and my crewmates a false lead. He knots the rag in his hands, pulling it taut. Uh, why would he do that? Why would I go bobbing for reason in shark-infested waters? He waves his rag like a handkerchief. Uh, Ra Raunu, 
Sure. Raunu was the last to speak with the captain before she set sail. He squats in the hut north northeast of that pitiful market. Okay. I would have joined her, but my stomach. Something did not agree. Now it is weeks since they should have returned. I am only the galley cook, not a search party. He nurses his stomach and winces. What's this? Uh, Vector isn't a valiant name. Uh, Pargrun, my grandparents gave up their nomadic ways when they moved to the republics. But I see the appeal of staying in one place, one safe place. He dabs at the back of his neck when, as he glances around. Well, I'll keep an eye out. Maybe they found something interesting. At, what is this? Agrasima? Agrasima, a valiant expression of gratitude. Ah, this is hope to my ears. He sighs and bows stiffly. Payment is assumed with the company. They are quick to buy what they do not have. He nods, the first sign of relief showing in his red-rimmed eyes. What has you so on edge? When we landed here on uh, Tikawara, the chieftain gave us a welcome fit for the ducks. The dukes? The deuces? I, I've got nothing. We feasted, danced, drank, and slept only so we could feast, dan dance, drink some more. The ghost of a smile flits across his face. You were awfully busy for a man claiming to be ill. Per complacent I got nothing. What is this? Um, a valiant term meaning literally for mercy or for little mercy, which has been taken as come on now. Music and ale are medicine for the soul. He pats a hand over his heart and gives you a sheepish look. Even so, they did nothing to soften soften the Anaharu. He said we had come to rob and plunder. He and Anari turned the villagers against us. He wipes a fresh rivulet of sweat from his temple. After that, we slept on the boat and took turns watching the shore. Except for me, I had to rest and recover, of course. <coughs> but in the early hours, our lookout saw Raunu and Anaharu disappear together. Go on. No one from the village appro approached us all day, and by afternoon, only Ra Raunu returned. Now, no one here will even talk of Anaharu. Suspicious, no? Perspiration gleams on his forehead. Our captain was eager to leave before the winds changed again. He mentioned Nairi. The priestess? She imagines me in the jaws of her fish goddess. I know, and he fans himself even more rapidly. She lurks in the shrine next to that awful statue. I cannot stand her wicked looks. But if she does not scare you, then maybe you talk to her. I need supplies. The captain left all but the essentials with me. I have uh, sustained myself trading with the villagers. Akosi. Excuse me. But I am also are almost out of ale. He gives you a weak smile and shows off his wares. Okay, that's cool. Oh look, there's infinite stuff. These are for what, repairing? Uh, particularly ones display structural weakness. I think that's for repairing and the flint and tinder is for sh um, uh, camping. At least that's the way it used to work. Actually, most of, all of his stuff is the same. Repair supplies, medical supplies. Oh, there's going to be a lot to this. Oh my goodness, there's so much stuff. <gasps> I love it all. How much money do we have? 2,000. I'm not going to do anything right now. I must watch the supplies at the trading post. You will come check on me, yes? I will. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is a bit of the gameplay. But I know a lot of people want to see some combat. And uh, while I'd rather go through and talk to all these people right away... They'll never know I'm here. Oh. Um, it's tab, okay. And do we get to see, like, their nameplates? There was a way to do that. I don't remember what that way was. Hmm. I thought it was, like, control or something. Maybe it's, like, Q or Q or E or... No? Well, like I said, I'm sure it's somewhere. There was a button you could press. I thought that showed like... Oh, yeah, there it is. It's only showing about half. But again, the game is in a, an early beta state, so... It makes sense that it wouldn't show everything up. Uh, shouldn't we have a map somewhere on the screen? Am I wrong? Like, I thought we had a map. Alright, well, we're going to come up this way. I thought we had a map that actually was like a mini map somewhere. But again, could be wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. Why not? 
The drum emits a deep, satisfying boom when you strike it. Nice. Boom. All right, we're going to go to the world map. We're going to get ourselves into some fights. It's going to be fun. We're going to adventure out and do long division or something. So. I must gather my party. Oh, apparently, I'm really, really slow at moving. Uh, I can just embark, I guess. Sure. I have no idea where I'm going, but it looks like fun. Let's head there. I may die, but either way, guys and gals, I want to see the combat myself. Like I said, this is just kind of a sneak peek. I think in the next one that I do, we'll pro I'll probably run around town a bit, get some idea of what I should be doing uh, off camera, and then I'll have a, an actual goal or an objective. And I think that's going to be pretty okay. Well, this is interesting. Well, how, what do I do? How does this even work? Oh, I just click on my... Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah, this, yeah, this is a bad idea. Let's go. The rumbling reaches your ears first, a low growl from the land, before being pierced by the cry of a distant bird. The ground sets to vibrating beneath your feet, the growing roar of the stampeding beasts echoing around you. You crest a rise to find that the stampede has passed, now only a rumbling cloud in the distance. As the dust settles, you note that a few of the boar remain fallen and still, with large feathered darts protruding from their fur. Uh, let's see here. A single upright boar remains. A piglet that nudges its snout against one of the prone beasts. Uh, approach it openly. Wait and watch. Sneak closer and observe. Choose a party member. Um, where's my stealth skill? Do we have that? I don't see a stealth ability. Oh, there. Because I didn't. I don't have a stealth ability. So you have three, you probably have a lot more, so you. You pick your way down the rise and approach the down boars. They seem to be breathing. That's a success, cool. Uh, albeit shallowly. You're not sure how long they have before they meet the wheel. Put the boars out of their their misery, collect the baby boar, attempt to heal the boars. Wait and watch, collect the baby boar. With a swift or with a single swift motion, you scoop up the piglet, clamping your hand over its snout. I've gained the baby boar! What? Investigate the surroundings, put the boars out of their misery. I can attempt to heal them. Who could heal them? Survival of six. I mean, you're a healer. Let's try this. Oh, you oh, you get to actually... Oh, that's so cool. You get to use skills. One of the boars fights to its feet, shaking itself roughly to throw off the darts of the series of snorts. The others seem beyond help. You spin on your heel at the sound of flapping feet, oh that's creepy, and find yourself staring down a group of Lagu Faith hunters. With a gurgled hiss, they advance upon you. This is amazing, folks. Oh, I'm excited. It's going to be great. Come on. Smoke that pipe later. Let's do this. Come on. There we go. Oh boy, howdy. Let's go. Those look amazing. Look at them. Look how cool they look. Oh, ooh, oh no, they have like mages and stuff. Oh gosh, this is terrifying. Okay, so there's our, our downed boar friend. Uh, I guess silly, silly Pants Jackson's up at the front lines. That seems bad. Oh, that is... Oh, that that oh that hurts my brain. The level 1 spells are, are broken. Cap uh, are capable of combat, but are not particularly effective at it. Instead, when summoned, they will provide the wizard with a passive effect. Okay. Uh, no, I don't think I'm going to do that one. Let's go here. Can I not? There we go. I'm going to cast that at you. You can retarget. The mercenary rogue can use stealth. You can escape. Confounding blind. Strike the bell. Piercing thrust. What's this? Empower. Empower yourself to refill half of your expended resources or empower a spell or ability to grant a large power level boost. Power may only be used on a character once per encounter and are restored upon rest. Huh. Get escape. Uh, what, what, what's this? Oh, that's how many points I have of Guile? Okay. What if I want... You cannot enter stealth mode in combat. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so that's fine. Uh, you're the fighter, okay? 
into the fray. I like it. Let's go get you to do that. Then you're the wizard. Uh, I need to see what's going to transpire. We have different speeds in the game too, right? Half speed? Yeah. That did not work. I guess the speeds aren't implemented yet. That's fine. Okay. And then who are you? What are you? You're a priest. Okay. Oh, three spells. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to be very, very awkward to start with. So I just... Oh, gosh. I apologize ahead of time. I feel like I'm about to die, which is not great. A hey, priest man, you should probably heal me. Alright, I should do this. I'm paralyzed, because of course I'm paralyzed. Why wouldn't I be? This is not going well for me. I feel like I'm dying quite badly. It's not going good. That mage up on the high ground is just wrecking my face. Meanwhile, over here, we seem to be winning this fight at least. He's laying down. He's not having a good time. Do we have something that's going to just like stop this guy from doing horrible things to me? Does not appear like that's the case. Okay, I'm going to go with this. Did I just die? I think I just died. Well, Gus Silly Pants Jackson did not seem to do a whole heck of a lot. And they have, like, Paralyzing Strike. It's not great. We should probably go and deal with that guy. Oh, you're blinded, immobilized, and almost dead. It's really going poorly for me. I'm not going to lie. I've definitely seen better days. Generating health in a circle. At any point that you want to heal, that would be fantastic. Okay. So you're fine. Alright, how do I get you to not just instantaneously die? I don't know. But I'd like to figure it out. What? 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 what uh, oh, she died too. Yeah, this fight is not going well. Our rogue is dead. Oh, no, she didn't die. She's just invisible. Because of reasons, I guess? I mean, I'm not complaining. She's paralyzed. But it seems bad. This is crazy. So that's how it's gonna go. Oh, our fighter's not doing so good anymore. Well, this is not going super well. I I, I don't I don't think it's gonna go very well here. Not my best moment. Is there any way you can second wind yourself, maybe? Charge! Nope. <laughs> well, like I said, guys and gals, it's just definitely not what you want to do when you get to a new area. Just run out and try to fight. But I did want to see what combat was like. And now that I've seen it, it's terrifying and I'm very, very, very scared. You can turn it to double speed. Doesn't look like you can go to half speed. I shall. No, go back to normal speed. I've reached my... Ah... She's still there and invisible. It's it's strange. Oh, she's back. She she's still invisible though. I bet. I feel like I didn't accomplish all that much. That's how it's gonna be. Do stuff. She's paralyzed again. And let's get our game over, folks. Let's get our game over. There it is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there is your first taste of combat. It was very poorly done for me. These things are significantly stronger. Uh oh, significantly stronger than me. Somehow I'm back to life with our boy over here. Not really sure how that works out. I'm not going to complain just yet. Show them how it's done. I think the stances are fine. Try our second wind. We're hobbled. And we are dunzoed.
I don't know if we're going to get back up after this. Nope, the party has died. Anyway, guys and gals, there you go. You get to have a little bit of fun. Like I said, it's going to be a few days. I'm going to be playing around in the town, picking up some quests, figuring out what I should be doing, where I should be going, and the next episode will have not just gameplay, where I die horribly and look really, really foolish, but it will hopefully have some gameplay where I can go and actually have a tactical fight, and I know what I'm doing and how the game works again. And just get back into touch with this. Because it's been a while since I played Pillars of Eternity, the first one. And, well, as you saw, that didn't go so well. Alright anyway, folks, I hope you guys enjoyed. Go ahead and leave a like if you did actually enjoy my horrible, horrible, awful, awful death. And you enjoyed the gameplay. The soundtrack is amazing. I'm, I'm looking forward to playing this, folks. And yeah, go ahead and leave a like, comment, and let me know what you thought of the game so far. Do you want to see more? Are you eager to see more? Is this something I should wait till next weekend to do? Would you like to see it maybe like Wednesday, Thursday, something like that? I'll need a couple days at least, guys and gals. Or, you know, just let me know your thoughts. And, of course, subscribe to the channel, guys and gals. Until the very next episode, my name's Bumpy McSquiggums. Thank you so much for stopping by The Freak Show, and I will see you later. <laughs>